Did you ever see the movie Zoom? Um, it's okay. I did, it was a great movie. It was. No one saw it though. Was it Zoom? Was it, it based on yes, Zoom? Yes, you did. What? Wait, no, Zoom. no, no. It was a with it was Tim Allen. Heroes. Tim, Tim Allen. Allen. Yeah. No, of course I saw oh my Zoom. God. Yeah, Wait, yeah. that was that was a. You might be my only two fans. That was a car DVD. I watched that movie in the car so many dude, times. Actually, yeah. Same, yes. dude, yeah. dude, absolutely. That's. I saw it in theaters though. Oh my with God. Uh, it was just me and my mom. It was barely in theaters. That's crazy. Welcome back to the nice sit and chat. <laughs> yeah. um, the newest episode of your. <laughs> Least favorite podcast. You know what I was thinking listen. about doing, dude? What if we just started doing like pre workout right before the episode so that we're just like, that's Rrr. how I felt when I did the Pointer Brothers episode. This is all which, the coffee. Oh my God, dude, I was charged. Yeah. I don't know if it was the coffee or this. I just was, maybe it was them, but when we were laughing so much, I was like, my heart was beating. I was vibrating at the beginning. So I, I a funny thing happened to me this morning. After I went to the gym, I went to Air One, but of course. But I showered at the gym, okay? And Do you wear shower shoes? Yeah. Well, of course. What? Of like course. sandals or like Yeah, I have shoes that are have some holes in them. You know, like, like oh. sandals that have So some they're literally water. meant for. It. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um I just wear beach sandals. Like that I, works too. Yeah. Um Cool. So yeah, anyway, okay, cool. Uh, I you know, I shower and I'm using a, a Q tip. I'm ready to leave. I use it like that too. I, I get all jolly. Um like a Welshman? Somebody oh. comes up and starts talking to me. And I was holding this Q-tip. As you're Q -tip. Q-tipping? Yeah, and then I got uncomfortable because I was like, I don't, like, this is weird that I'm holding this Q-tip. And I couldn't find a trash can right around me. So I I, I put it in my pocket, which oh. was just gross in general. I clean my ears every day, though, so my ears are very clean. But anyway, I put it in the pocket, and I was like, okay, I got to remember to take that Q-tip out because that's gross, you know? I don't want a Q-tip in my pocket all day. But I forgot, and I left. And I go to Air One. And I'm, I'm you go to pay. I, I, I had it broken. I broke the Q-tip to like get it in my pocket. I don't know why it was just halved. And uh, I'm standing. I or I order my smoothie because I'm a you know basic white girl ordering my Air One smoothie. And I'm standing there. And <laughs> this was when Steve Irwin's son was standing next to me, right? And I looked down, and there was a Q-tip on the ground. Oh no! And I'm like, ugh. Why is there a Q-tip on the ground, right? And then I processed. I'm like, oh, shit. That's my, my Q-tip. So then I, I thought, what do I do? Because I can't leave the Q-tip there. That's just rude and disgusting. Everyone's such a nice place. Like, that would be rude of me to do. But then I'm like, but I don't want to look like a freak picking up this Q-tip. Because that's gross. Like, are they thinking I'm just being like a good human and picking up somebody else's Q-tip? Or are they like, why did this, this guy have Q-tips Q in pockets? So I, uh, I picked it up. You picked it up I with your bare hands. I went and got a napkin and picked That's it up. That's what I was gonna say. Yeah, good job. That's I what... know, but then that that made me feel like they thought even more that I was just picking up somebody else's Q-tip. Yeah, but then it looks like you're, you know, a person for the planet, person yeah. for the store. You're being a good Samaritan. Yeah, that's kind of like yeah. the justification I had in my head. And then there was some Purell there, so I, I sanitized my hand and I was like, "Ooh, who's Ralph? And why is he so pure?" That is so stupid, dude. It's a good guy, that guy, Rel. That is really, Lovely. really dumb. What was a good end to your story, I think? That was a way to finish it. You used the Purell after you grabbed the Q-tip with the napkin? Yeah, just because, I don't know, I was just grabbing the ground. I don't know, it's you just, don't believe in lot. super germs? I was hoping you would pick your nose more when you did that. No, 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 I was rubbing the end of it. Okay. You know, I have a piece of cartilage there because I had to have a um, little surgery right here. Now, I didn't fix my giant fucking nose, but... Um, <laughs> But I I had to vote. What's it called? Yeah. <laughs> Somebody's like, dude, you got a nose job? You're like, yeah. I, yeah. I did. I did. But they I didn't added fix anything. Some stuff. Yeah. <laughs> um, I got the inside shaved down. What am I? It's like a sinus deviated reduction. Septum. Deviated septum. Thank yeah. you. Yeah. I had a deviated septum and then I had a little sinus reduction and it didn't do shit. Still have horror. And I think it's the LA air. I oh, think the air sure. sucks so much here. The air's terrible here. Did your mom do it? Uh, she did the first one. It didn't do anything. Like she broke my nose. And Did then, she just punch you? I think she literally put a wooden stick up there. Oh, I can't. I can't. And I was it. under, really, I and she just I can't, I can't snapped that. it. That, that, just oh, literally dude, like... stop, bro. That makes And I wasn't... I don't think I was all the way under for that. Like, I remember feeling like I was going under, oh, and then feeling just a little pop in my sleep. So gross, dude. Dennis is going to throw up. You're going to throw up. <laughs> I can tell he's going to throw up, bro. 
<laughs> He's, oh my god, dude! It makes I, me want to. <laughs> Ew! Why'd you yeah. do that to start this episode? Man, I just, I just, I needed it to happen. You know, I needed to breathe better, not better. Breathe better than better. Better. thought, better. Hmm. Dude, I watched uh, an episode that we did that will have come out by the time that this one comes out. Mm -hmm. How are you watching it? How? Why? 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 Um, I, I have just to watch it, edit all of them, but yeah. But I was curious. Um, and it was, it was uh, the time when you and I could not stop laughing in the beginning, and it, I had residue laughter from it that kept making me laugh while I was watching it. And it was like, I was laying in bed, it was like 5.30 in the morning, and I'm just laughing my ass off by myself, just like, huh. What were we laughing about? Dude, honestly? Nothing. Nothing. Yeah. It's and that's the best, though. But I, I think it's the best for us. I don't know if other people are, I think people are going to be like, dude, what's wrong with these guys? Look, it's more enticing as a, as a clip versus actually being there and we're laughing about <laughs> absolutely nothing. We also that's what happens when we go out places, though. Like, when we went to that event, I feel like I just, we, we made... Bits monotonous yeah. conversation and then yeah. Yeah, bits were funny for like 10 minutes the problem is i don't know when we adopted this thing but um for some reason we got a lizard <laughs> i don't know when we adopted this thing i don't know what to do with this child over here <laughs> our guest. Just, can you cut to our guest <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, I, I don't know when we adopted this, but anytime somebody makes like a bad joke, it's just like you're like laughing. Ha ah, ha ha. You make a bad joke. And it's <laughs> just... We've been doing that for so long. And then the, the Pointer Brothers really brought that back to life. Well, what it was was remember when Devin on Mighty Med would always like he couldn't stop laughing. So he would look at you and just be like, like trying oh, to keep it in. <laughs> oh, my God. That's always the hardest, dude. Have you ever had a time where you couldn't? Like, could not keep it together. I mean, like, what what I remember from school is I would just talk and laugh. No, I was back. talking about on set. Oh, yeah. Well, Devin, there was one scene, and I think it was the week that <laughs> Alfonso Ribeiro directed. The sandwich yeah. scene. I was just so curious. Where were you going with what you thought I asked you? <laughs> you go, there was like... Well, like I I'm remember in school, scenarios. I'm in school, joking. I don't know. You're in the back of class. You're laughing. You're talking. <laughs> like, I'm thinking you like going? you're not supposed to laugh. I'm thinking of like when you're not supposed to laugh when it's not uh, socially appropriate or like it's funny on set to have bloopers. Like I think it's so great to have that belly guttural laugh. <laughs> it is so inappropriate and people yeah. get so pissed. They get pissed, dude, because it's happening to them. You know, like they have to deal with it. It's not it funny. It costs money. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's time. Dude. But like, uh, my favorite thing in the world is just going on YouTube late night. Not my favorite thing in the world. My other favorite thing in the world is uh, traveling and spending time with you because I love you. That's so sweet, dude. Oh, Thank right. you, man. You won't say I love you at the end of this episode. I'm going to say it, and then I feel like you're not going to say it back. I'll think about it. Um, is just watching bloopers. <laughs> I just like, uh, it's always sunny in Philadelphia has unbelievable bloopers because they just do the dumbest bits. And they have the, just the dumbest characters that say wild things that you would never expect. To come out of you. <laughs> and I just, it's so funny. Dude, dude so I was doing an episode of Schooled one time. and <laughs> You guys laugh in that show? What? So you guys were allowed to laugh in that show? <laughs> no, dude. But there was a scene where it's, whoever I was with was really trying to make me laugh. And this was like an ABC sitcom with like like known comedians, you know? And I'm like, dude, I'm I'm showing up here. I was like 20 years old and I'm just like trying to fit in, be Hung professional. Over from school. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I'm hammered on set. <laughs> no, I'm not I've never done that. I've never done that. Um, but I'm just like trying to fit in and make sure that I'm being professional, you know? And somebody was like intentionally trying to make me laugh in my coverage. It was the classic like asshole move where it's like yeah. it's over his shoulders. So he's not on camera and they can't see him. Is he like making the bit bigger? Is he like making faces? or? What yeah. Was and he's just like he didn't actually have to say the correct line because they're obviously not going to use it. So he was just running a bit on me. And I... I, I was in a two shot. It was me and Karin, I think, was in the episode too. But Karin was like, whatever he was doing in the scene was like looking at somebody else. And so I'm having to like not laugh. And I just was so scared because the set was so intense and like real ABC uh -huh. comedy, you know? So I was like just doing shit. And I watched the episode back and you can see me and I'm just like, 
I like vining my shirt at some point because we're having like a stressful conversation. So I'm like, how can I make this seem stressful? So I'm like, oh, oh, I'm so mad right now. And then I just thought, man, these people just probably think I suck, dude. They probably think I'm like such a terrible actor. I was so pissed at the scene, and I was like, I fucking hate you, dude. Like, I, I love that though. That's so fun. I I, I like when it's. Totally not appropriate. Just trying to extend the bit and just get when get it's your set guard. though. Great. Oh, yeah, yeah. You can do that when you're there. When it's I'm like there, you're for just a trying week? to do your job. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. I feel like we'll talk about this later in the episode too. Not that exact situation, but being hey, a guest star on the show. Being SR. Um, <laughs> I remembered when I did Dexter when I was like 12. This is the exact opposite situation. But the guy that played the the, the Trinity Killer, um, John Lithgow, was so intense, and I was just. 12 and was having a good time i was scared of him and i would not stop laughing yeah <laughs> and i would laugh in his face in his coverage and he would like turn around and walk away and i was like i'm sorry guys i don't know <laughs> it's so weird that was your voice at i mean that's what it sounded like it, was, it wasn't uh deep and tonal and lovely and <laughs> smooth like this um <laughs> but i i that was when I first realized that, no, it's not funny. <laughs> I, I, it's not funny to laugh on set at all. I told somebody this story the other day of when, um, when the first AD called you Paul when you were doing, or Bob or something oh, like yeah. that. What was that on? Was that Warren? Did Warren do that? No, no? dude. You were. I think you were just doing a show because you, you this was like recently. It was like three months or like not three months ago, like a year ago. Whatever oh, you had just done. That was lessons in chemistry. Yeah. Yeah. And the guy kept calling you Bob or something. Yeah. Paul or Bob. I, it was the first AD, maybe the director or someone. It, it was a hectic day and they just called me Paul and I was like, that was it they, your character? They kept name? looking. Nope. Not even close. <laughs> oh, I forgot about that. And they kept looking at me and they were like, I was like, oh, I'm Paul. Got it. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. No, no. I'll show up for you. Totally. <laughs> just picture you just like, they're like, hey, Paul. And you're like, Me? Yeah. <laughs> you, you, you talking to me? Oh, I love doing love doing guest spots, man. Yeah. And then they ask you if this was your first job. Yeah, they did. So many so <laughs> many things happen on that set. I got a I, I asked, I was I never I always get my own I lunch. Gotta, I, I asked, always I go never. straight to like the back of the line. I don't I I don't like cut in front of people. That day I was like, Hey, I want this and can you put it in my dressing room? Um Right after we finished, right at the beginning of lunch, I grabbed my lunch, I got in my car, and I left, and I ate at home. <laughs> I was done. Honestly, though, really cool set. Really cool, um, I mean, 50s, and I, I I got to play a different character. I got to play a reporter. I got to do some cool stuff in hair and makeup. But um, just picturing you I'm a guest out, star. Peeling out with your Dude, food. <laughs> I think that I'm was, out. That was right before I had my... My Bronco, too. Bro. So I had my loud Beamer. BMW. I started in the parking lot. It's on like a cold start in the middle of October. It's Flip like, off as you leave. like, thanks for the fucking food. <laughs> you just throw it at him. That's what I got this job for. Thanks, Paul. Catering. <laughs> Dude, jackass. I worked on a set one time. I'm not going to name it, but I was sitting in my Paul. <laughs> I was working on Paul. <laughs> I was I about that. Why did you remind me of that? I'm sorry. Hang on. Let me tell my thing. So I was sitting in my dressing room and I, I, I was just waiting. I had been, dude, my call time was six. I filmed at seven. I stopped filming at eight. Okay. And they were like, your next scene is at two. And I'm like, that's bad planning, but okay. Okay. So I'm sitting in my dressing room. And somebody knocks on my door and it's like one o'clock. And they were like, Hey, did you get lunch? And I was like, no. And they go, oh, we're back from lunch. And I go, what? <laughs> they're, like, they're like, did nobody tell you it was lunch? I go, no. And they go, did they bring you food? And I go, no. And she goes, hang on. And she goes and gets the AD and the AD comes back in and she goes, hey, I'm so sorry. I mean, we forgot to get, we got forgot to get your lunch order. So everybody already ate. And I was like, okay, is there food on set that I can go get? And she was like, I think it's all gone. <laughs> I'm like, all right. Wait, didn't cool. Corin not get lunch that day either? That was a different thing. Different thing. Different thing. Yeah, yeah. But um, 
I go, I was like, okay. So what do now I do? <laughs> yeah, and she was like, I think there's a cafe on the, on the lot. And I'm like, yeah, if you want to go spend 15 bucks. <laughs> yeah, do you want me to go do it? Yeah. And she's like, yeah. And I'm like, okay, cool. So then I sat around for another two hours and they were like, and hey, we're not getting to your scene today. So I waited from 8 a.m. to 4, I think. And they were like, you're going to need to come back tomorrow. Yeah. Wow. That's the, uh, the beauty of the life of an actor. Yeah. And then you didn't get paid for coming back the next day. You just got paid for the episode. Yeah, probably did. Yeah. Should we dive into it this a fun. little more? With yeah, the, I think I think we're going to do some actory talk this episode. <laughs> <laughs> I have a strong feeling we're going to talk about actory stuff. I wonder like a if lot, people dude. like this bit as much as we do. What? Or the, do you think that the, they picked the up on the fact that we shoot this after? No, they haven't picked up on it. Hey, All right, let's get to, let's get to Ryan. Can you turn that screen off so we don't look at it? That's how we're going to start this episode. I love how no, you guys are obsessed with how you look on this, and I haven't looked or asked once. Yeah, well, well we saw how you look. Where are the women great. here? Bradley looked at the screen. Okay, this is how we're starting it. Hold on. Bradley looked at the screen the last episode we did so many times, the one yesterday. You were looking at it the whole time. I know. Well, he's also facing it. I yeah, Just to I, give I, him I a little yeah, bit yeah, of no, it. I, yeah. I, it's, yes. I just see it. And I so clearly, because sometimes I'm like telling a story and like my arms will be up and I'm like, oh, Ooh, wow, that's not <laughs> good. I shouldn't do that. You know, so now, but now I'm scared because I actually can't see it and it, I don't even know what I'm going to look at. Like, Where's your self-identity? Ryan Whitney, thank you for coming in. Ryan Whitney is here to join the best name of a podcast that's ever existed. The Shit and Chat. chat. Yeah, yeah. Shit and Chat. The shit and Chat. So we, we were talking about this earlier. We're going to talk about it again. But okay. the reason I'm telling you this is because you know my mother very well. Yes. My oh, mom this is the funny story? and Ryan's mom uh, are very like best, best friends. Place. They hang out all the time. Um, but yesterday, we it got pointed out to us that his mom's name is Kim as well. And we were like, came up with the idea of the show name of Son of a Kim would have been oh so much better. Oh my gosh, you need to change it. Yeah. Yeah, it's a thought. It's not like Shit and Shat has really, you know, taken off. off. No. Well, thanks. <laughs> I mean, it's not great. Cool. Names, thanks for watching I mean, YouTube. the name. Yeah, yeah, yeah right, right. The, the name does not mean anything. They're like, it's not like anybody watches this. No. Thing. Yeah. Just um, the name. It just, it, yeah. It's hard to change it again because we already it had is, this struggle with like starting a whole new podcast, like getting people to go, oh, oh, that's the name of the show again. Okay. Maybe, I mean, we could do like a, they go, what, what if that's called? like our Patreon name? Son of a Kim? Yeah. Sons of Kim? Yeah. Which one's better? Sons of Kim or Son of a Kim? Son of a Kim. I son of a so. Kim too. Yeah. You real son of a because Kim. Because it doesn't, podcast names don't mean anything no. usually. Like unless it's specifically about something. But that's a good one though. That's a good one. Yeah. yeah my mom called me a son of a bitch one time and I said, I know. Ooh. I didn't tell you. Do I need to slap you for her? Out of me. Specifically. No, my mom scares me so much. She's going to see this episode. Yeah, you still call dude, her Kim. I just said you I don't even call her mom. No, you I still call her Kim. Kim. I do. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Well, even my. Has uh, he been doing that his whole life? Oh, my whole life. Yeah. Yeah, I've always called her something else. I never called her so mom. So rude. Only when it was like Justice if I'm for Kim sad as mom. or if like I'm mm. angry, it would be mom. When you're sad, yeah, yeah. you so, call her mom yeah, yeah, yeah. or but he mommy. Doesn't, he doesn't refer to her as he's like, I got to call Kim. He'll say, I got to call mom. No. In f- that I say really? my, yeah, I guess say my mom. My mom. Because yeah. I okay. find it weird when people say mom, not my mom. Yeah. Like I, we have a like it's a Fallon and Robert. Mom. They yeah. call they call their mom just mom. Yeah. So they'll be like, yeah, well, I was with mom, and, oh, and it, yeah. that's weird to me because it's like, well, it's not my mom. Oh, see, that's normal to me when they do it to me because I'm so close. That's my best. I know, but it's out. still, that's it's fine. like, um, it's but still something about it. I don't yeah. Know. But if oh. they do it to everyone, yeah, I don't, I don't know. All right, well, let's give a little background on you and how long we've known <laughs> each other. Because oh yeah, we just started talking randomly. Were your parents, did they meet each other on set? Or well, we they... met Disney 101, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, So we had to do... Uh, oh, is that the sexual the... harassment seminar thing? Yeah. No, that was before yeah. that existed. This was like media training. Yeah, it was don't yeah. post your address online. Yes, yes. yes. yeah, how to deal with stalkers. Dude, so it was like right as... Right as I started working on Good Luck Charlie, when you started doing Zeke and Luther, I'd already been, but they hadn't. It was their it, first time. Like starting. Twitter wasn't a thing. Then. Yeah, remember, was, like Twitter came out. I think my first year of Good Luck Charlie, oh, and I so love they Twitter. had to start mm. this class. When I was thirteen. I loved me some Twitter, man. Did well, you let's do go this find class? The tweets. Oh, well, I deleted all. What did did you do this class? The media oh yeah, channel? and I, I have some. I have a funny story about it. For but I think we were at the first one. Yes, they, and, yeah, they hadn't done one. I had already been with Disney for a couple of years, I think, and then they started doing that, yeah, yeah. and that's where oh okay. So they started doing it because the internet was like people had internet more of an online thing. presence yeah. And, yeah 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 i think it was either our first or second season of good luck it had to have been our first because you first. were in our second season yeah they didn't do a lot of things right with kids but they they did need to do that seminar and i'm glad they did that like i mean that definitely yeah 
I mean, that was, I think, the only time I had done it. And it was so early on and everything that it wasn't really applicable yet. Like, now no. it's absolutely necessary. Back then yeah. it was like, oh, yeah, okay, that's a cool idea for them to do. But, but what's interesting, though, is actually I feel like at that time it almost made more sense because we didn't know what it was at all. Yeah. You know? Wait. What's up with this? Did you do your Disney 101 because of Zeke and Luther? Yeah. Or no? That's how I met you. I know. Oh my god, I forgot about I that. I think we probably, I probably met each of you around the same time, probably yeah. about fifteen years ago. Where but you, you hadn't met each other Where yet. Did you guys? Meet? I was on Zeke and Luther. Yeah. Were you really? Yes, yeah. at a table read before Am Farm. Yeah, uh, way yeah, before. that was a year and a half. Or that's like, it. You were so young. Yeah, I was like. No, he probably wasn't. He was actually probably eighteen years old. No, he just he looked like. Bro, he was probably like twelve. <laughs> I was young too. I was like eleven or twelve. So yeah, I'm sure. I think I was older than you, and I think. Well, I guess. Well, how would you be older than me? Am I tw how, uh, 20? I'm 26. How old are you? Okay, I'll be 26 in a couple months. Wait, okay, so I looked wow. probably three years younger than you. I looked like no, I was No, but nine. I knew your actual age. Like, uh, what year did Zeke and Luther start? I was nine when I did the pilot. So 2007. And then I think I was closer to 11 by the time we started filming this So series, then we started like at the same exact time then. Because I started. Well, you're I, a little younger than me. Bradley. I did the pilot by like five months. I don't, I don't know if that That's changes what? the show, dude. <laughs> Uh, but my uh, when I did the pilot, Wait. I was nine. So then when we started the show, I was ten. Oh, same thing. Okay. Yeah. So then yeah. We were, it was about around the same time. Yeah, okay. yeah. Why? What were you about to say? Well, I'm just thinking of the timeline of like I guess Zeke and Luther must have started right after you guys did. I didn't even think about that. Probably like it was same. Yeah, like same right around the same time. Ish, yeah. Because you guys were like the first XD show, right? Yes. And dude. I remember XD starting. Second, I think there was something before us. Did you still talk to Hutch and? And I've seen Hutch, yeah. Oh man. Yeah. I thought he was gonna be the next. I just thought oh, he was so yeah. cool. Everyone yeah. did, yeah. I thought it was like twelve, and he was probably what is he, thirty now? Like probably thirty-one. So, yeah. 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 He was like sixteen 30s. or seventeen, yeah. when he, and yeah, I was yeah. like, oh my god, this guy's so cool. I really liked that. You show. wanted to be him. Yeah. Oh yeah. That was Skaters. A, that was a cool show because you guys didn't do a live audience. It was single cam, wasn't single it? Single cam. That was the, not a thing on Disney. Yeah. You guys might be like the only show that did that for years. Yeah. It's strange. It was great experience. It was, yeah. you know, totally different experience. But. What was the uh, yeah. what was the process like for that? Like, what was your audition process of getting that, going through all of it? The usual, like yeah. tons of auditions, screen tests, chemistry tests, um, all that kind of stuff. You know, network. Yeah. Tests. When's the last time you had eight auditions for something too? It does never so happen. I miss it though. Like, I, I think yeah, I I'm, know. you know, might be the only person in the world who no. like misses in person auditions. It. You're you're with us. It's yeah. it's the people who were doing it for so long that yeah. like that's what they're used to because you know self tapes came around maybe when I was in my teens or maybe even late teens it was like an option and i always choose not to do it i oh, used I to them. go in person yeah. instead but most people just did them so most people were used to them before we probably were yeah well and but well it's not something you worked on you worked on your presence in the room and how you were going to deliver yeah. with the casting director it's a totally different thing totally than different. like yeah i always like to believe too that i mean it's like a job interview that I if it weren't self tapes we'd be working right now I yeah, agree. Yeah. Yeah, yeah that's what i like to believe same same, same guys same. Yeah. yeah someday um i i always like to believe i could kind of not like persuade the casting director, but I could show that maybe I was a little more than just the role. And so they saw a bigger yeah. potential. Cause like I, I tested for this show last year, there was a comedy and it, it was all on zoom and everything, yeah. you know? And I'm like, dude, when it, it like back in the day, you would want to at least talk to this person and be like, can I write a show around this guy? Yeah. You know, is there a world where he, I can do any joke and he's going to sell it? Yeah. But like if you don't, if you're just basing it off of like four audition tapes, like yeah. how do you know? How do you know if that person's really funny or if they just did that scene a hundred times at home? Yeah. And, and got finally perfect got a good that tape. one take. Yeah. yeah. You know, it's just, it's just not the same. But so I actually, we've probably talked about this. If not, my mom's brought it up before. So this is the funny story that I was going to tell you was you were in a movie called Zoom. Okay. Yes. Did you ever see the movie Zoom? Um, it's okay. That's did, it was a great movie. It was. No one saw it though. Was it Zoom? Was it. it based on yes, Zoom? Yes, you did. What? Wait, no, Zoom. no, no. It was a with it Tim, was Allen? Tim, Tim Allen. Tim Allen. Yeah. yeah of course I saw oh my Zoom. god! Wait, that was that was a. You might be my only two fans. That was a car DVD. I watched that movie in the car so many dude, times. Actually, dude, actually, yes. dude, yeah. dude. Absolutely. <gasps> That's I saw it in theaters though. Oh with uh, it was just me and my mom. It was barely in theaters. That's crazy. So this is what I'm going to say though. No. I think you were the person who started off my love for your blonde blogs. fetish. Yeah. Oh wow. Well, let's not call it a fetish. <laughs> <laughs> you know, on, on, this does go out online. Um, 
But yeah, yeah, because you were blonde in that movie. Uh -huh. Probably the only time in your life you were blonde. Right? I got I got pretty light. Remember, I, I started like highlighting my hair and then I got pretty light at one point and I actually went to dinner with you and you're like, you're blonde. And I was like, okay, I'm okay, done. I didn't say, okay, bro. <laughs> you're blonde. What's up with this? You've said two things that have made me sound so creepy. Why did Bradley do a shoulder roll? He said, you said two things. Yeah, okay. No, I didn't do that. Because he's uncomfortable. He I am super uncomfortable. No, no, no. But no, I, I, I had think... a big crush on you in that movie too. I think oh, I was like I'm 10 years old. No, younger than that, dude. I, think I, I was I think I was probably six, six turning seven when I filmed it yeah so then it came out we were probably like eight years old yeah you oh, were okay. probably 27 of yeah. course debating like one or two years as if it's the biggest deal in the world for everything and i <laughs> thought tim allen was so who were the other people in the oh, courtney man. cox yeah yeah oh, chevy chase it was a lot that's of people right. dude kate mara now she was you know she's kate mara oh, now, that's right but yeah. yeah i'm gonna I go back and watch that movie now what i'm gonna go back and watch that movie i now. am too that mm. it's gonna be better than bench warmers let's tell you that much oh we went back and watched bench warmers during COVID, I think. We're mountain. And have you seen that movie? I don't know. Oh man, it's just it was so funny when we were kids. And it, it was it was so a boy. Now. It was like a young boy movie. Okay. It was like about like a baseball. It sounds team. very familiar. There's but a not good Zoom. Chance Zoom is going to be awesome when we go back. And I'm actually it. really okay. excited to watch that. I will I'm, say I did I'm watch uh, Wild Hogs recently with Tim Allen <laughs> as well, and I was like, whoa, <laughs> this is tough to get through. Dude. Not to be confused with old dogs. That, yeah, that was the one I was in. Bradley's. Yeah, yeah. And then I recently watched two, and I don't speak. I was basically background. But it was a big movie for me. Yeah. Anyway, well, so that's what I attribute to uh, well, you, I'm very probably sorry. my first crush, really, at that age. At seven I'm years so old. so uncomfortable right now. Man, you should be. <laughs> I can so funny. crawl out of my skin. Yeah, yeah. I mean, that's that's uh, that's a, a huge achievement, guys. though, to work uh, next to those actors. Oh, yeah, like, that was, like, the coolest thing I've ever and will probably ever do. I, that was insane. It's, I think you'll do cooler stuff. I think so too. I no, it In was so wild. I was so young. I mean, I had done Monsters. I'd done another movie already, and you know, obviously a million commercials. But it was such a big budget production. I mean, the budget on that thing, and this was de you know decades ago almost. So it was like maybe a hundred, hundred and fifty mil budget, which crazy. was crazy back then. Today's age, that's a what? billion dollar movie. It was yeah. It yeah. was the experience was insane. And did it tank? Well, I don't know if I'm allowed. I don't. I mean, I never signed I can look anything. It up right but now. It, it was Revolution Studios, which kind of fell under Sony, so they were going bankrupt, and they kind of did it with our movie. So mm. they kept putting more and more into the budget purposefully, and had like zero in the marketing budget. So no one even knew this movie existed. Yeah. So they were like, okay, let's put ton of, mo ton of money into it and not promote it, and we can go bankrupt and fall under Sony wow. and get what? dissolved. And so that's what they did. Wow. Well, worked out for you. I mean, ish. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, but it was a, an I, amazing experience. You have two fans right here. That's, that's, yeah. that's all I need. Odds Literally. are good if we both saw it. A lot of other a people, lot of people saw it. it. Yeah. yeah. But uh, I think the the rule of thumb is whatever you spend on your budget, it's supposed to double to do marketing. Yeah, that was that was not the case. Yeah, because I mean, if you look at like Barbie, their Gosh. marketing budget was two. Everywhere, I mean, everything, or like a hundred million. As it oh, easily yeah. more than that. Yeah, yeah. Probably. I mean, it was it was everywhere, dude. But that's how you get people to go watch the movie. Like, if you look yeah. at like the hype behind Barbie before it even came oh, out, yeah. same with Oppenheimer. It was like everybody was going to go see it just based off of the promotions. You didn't even need to see the trailer. Were you a bit? Or do you go to the theaters a lot to watch movies? Uh, since COVID, not really. Yeah, I'm. I'm kind of. You know, I'm a bit. You know, like like Kim. A little, little, Germ little, little Germany. Germany. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, so I just, it's not as comfortable anymore. I will for movies that like have to be seen in theater. They just, there's no other way to yeah. like actually get the experience. But you see Oppenheimer I in prefer, theaters? No, I need to. Did you see Barbie? Yes. Okay. So one or two. Huh? How lame. Classic. I only saw one of them. <laughs> Yeah. You know, I will watch it. I made it a weekend. I actually saw that. I felt like a kid again because I saw Mission Impossible the same weekend. I saw three movies in three days in theaters. Oh, the new one where he jumps off the motorcycle off the cliff? Yeah, yeah. I, I love know those Mission Impossible movies. They're so simple and Such a nothing. Such boy movie. Yeah, it's yeah, exactly. That's why I love it. But yeah, Oppen it was fun because when Barbie and Oppenheimer came out, it was nice to see people go back to the movies because yeah. I love movie theaters. Yeah. I love going to the movies. Like, actually showing up waiting for the movie time sitting there not being on your phone it's really nice yeah. and it doesn't really compare when you sit at home and eating popcorn being in hushed voices like oh yeah, 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 yeah. oh so that's yeah. what you do yeah, yeah that's what i do oh, yeah I throughout popcorn. the whole movie yeah, yeah you well you don't finish the popcorn before the movie starts we're talking that? about the talking yeah yeah 
You're talking the whole time? Yeah, I don't think I didn't no, mean no, the no, popcorn. No, 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 no. Yeah. We're good on that. You can <laughs> eat it. Before the movie You can eat starts. as much popcorn <laughs> as you want, Jake. Dude, the, uh, I, the last movie I saw, I went to Maestro with my mom. And the oh. people next to me were talking the whole movie. And I turned to my mom like, and very loudly said, do you think these people have ever been to a movie before? Oh, man. And they definitely heard me. And it, they, they were so loud. To be fair, they were like 78 years old. Did they we stop did talking? go see Maestro on a Tuesday at three o'clock. That's your own so fault. I, yeah, I think yeah. we probably could have guessed that the audience there would have been. Yeah. They missed their bowling league to go see that movie that day. Yeah, yeah, probably. Yeah. He's in a bowling league. Did you I'm know? in a bowling league. Really? Are you good? I am. I yeah, I had a at 200 average the other night. I don't know what that means, but I'll that's think pretty, you're amazing. That's pretty good for a like a a, a non once a week bowler. Okay. Yeah. All right. So ironically enough, you and I have known each other since we were nine, ten years old. We also went to rival colleges. Yes, yeah. we, we did. UCLA. She went to, UCLA. I went to UCLA. His girlfriend goes to UCLA. Oh. She's going to graduate in this spring, I What think. is she studying? Philosophy. Oh, you should also clarify cool. she's not a child. She's taken a long time to graduate college. I mean, she's 23, not, well, but she'd be, be 24. Yeah. But I mean, No, I'm saying it's not like you're dating a 21-year-old about to come out of college. Oh, at 26 yeah. years old. I guess not. No. I was just trying to help you out, but I'll Thanks. shut up. Never mind. <laughs> anyway, um, yeah, so you went to UCLA. I went to USC. Um, why UCLA? Weird choice, in my opinion. Oh, we're going like, to fight. How did that come to be? What did you study? Blue's how did you right. like it? Take us through the college experience. UCLA was always the dream. Never even considered USC. And you attended? Like you went? You didn't do anything? Did you, no, you didn't do completely anything in person. I did, uh, and I finished in three years. I did it um, quickly. So I did all my summers as well. So, yeah. Paid for four years, but did it in three yeah. just to get done quicker, which I'm glad I did because I ended up graduating in 2019 and got a real graduation instead of 2020 oh, yeah. like I should have. Yeah. I mean, like me. Yeah. yeah. But uh, UCLA was kind of, I don't want to say the only option, but I just was kind of like, I'm. that's where I want to go. First of all, I studied psychology and their psychology program is yeah. incredible. And, um, you know, to pay for four years... Uh, in one year at USC, just didn't uh, really seem like the best so you're my dad, not use me. I don't of my funds. <laughs> so, um, and uh, yeah, I mean, my mom went to UCLA, so that was, you know, kind the of legacy. Legacy. Um, it, it's not why I went, but I just, I think it's an incredible school. It was close. You know, I really struggled with it at the time because I always said, literally since I was this big, I'm going to go to an Ivy League college. And the time came around and I was 16 and I was on a show full time and, um, you know, applying to colleges and dealing with my SATs and all that stuff. And I was like, am I really going to use all the money I've ever made to go across the country and go to an Ivy League to get an education in something that I don't actually want to pursue? It's just to kind of have and be, you know, a well-rounded person, and you know, have a backup plan, whatever. Um, That really doesn't seem very smart. So I was like, okay, well, I'll just apply just so that I can say I got in. Folks, gents, ladies. Is this necessary? Welcome back. To the sit and chat. We had a small interruption. Well, and pretend there's uh, an ad break there. Huh? Thanks to our Coming sponsors. Coming back. Thanks to our sponsors, Wood Paneling yeah. and George Costanza. <laughs> Super weird. We cut people off in the middle of their sentences to do our ad breaks, but yeah. God, take it away, Ryan. Do. Anyway, yeah. uh, the time came to actually apply, and I was like, you know, I'm literally only applying just to be able to tell people I got into an Ivy League school. Probably not the best thing to do. Yeah. Probably shouldn't do that. So I didn't end up doing it, and, you know, my ba- I was just going to go to community college for a couple years and then transfer to UCLA if I didn't get in. But I did get in. Mm. And I, you know what I did? Instead of applying to Ivy Leagues just to say I got in, I just clicked the UC Berkeley, you know, little checkbox when I did my UC application, yeah. and I did get into there as well. But yeah. and at the time, UC Berkeley, they kind of go back and forth of which one's like better. And at the time, yeah. Berkeley was, a, you know, a little bit better, a little bit more competitive. Yeah. And so that was my little small win. Little caveat. I yeah. do feel like though UCLA and USC uh, are both like, it's it's almost like Ivy of the West, you know? It's exactly. like those, those, It's just as hard to get it's into It's just almost. as hard to get into. And I feel like people on the East Coast probably think, oh, I'd love to go to UCLA, yeah. man. That would be so cool. So it's like, I, I think that like... Growing up in Southern California, like we both did, it's like you kind of think of the idea of like, maybe I want to go East Coast for school and do something new. But it's like, we have such great schools here, especially with the UC system. Like all those schools are incredibly esteemed. So it's like- I'm a big public school girl for sure, if you can. I I do, I will say, Bradley, you you did go for things that USC specializes in. Yeah, going for film for sure. I understand that. And also for me, I was such a big football fan, like a big- USC football fan growing up 
that I always wanted to go to USC because of that. Because you think they're bad. We do know someone who has their acceptance from USC uh, displayed. Displayed? Displayed. What? What? You don't know who I'm talking about? I really don't. Just an acceptance. So like you were saying, you don't want to like oh, just yeah, get just accepted able, into it. We yeah. know someone who got accepted and displays it. And you don't know who I'm talking about, which is so funny. I would love to you'll, hear this you'll after we're done. you know exactly who I'm talking about. I don't, I don't know anybody else that went to USC. They, they didn't, didn't go. go. They oh. got in is what he's saying. They got in. I don't even have, I don't honestly don't even know where my diploma is. I think it's in a drawer in my apartment somewhere. I'm sure. I'm sh- you don't think Kim has it? Do you No, that? she gave me, because she doesn't like hoarding things so that she gave me all oh this yeah stuff. it's uh, hoarding your diploma yeah, is such diploma. a horrible thing i do so but <laughs> a lifetime achievement yeah. Yeah. along the lines of the money thing one time i called a, my, you know i was living down there and i just was having a bad day and i was on the phone with my dad you were hungry you wanted a sandwich probably and I, I just was like complaining about something about something that happened at school and i just was complaining a lot and he goes he stops me and he goes genuinely stop and i was like why and he goes I don't want to hear you complain about the school that I'm paying for you to be at. So just stop talking. I feel you, Steve. I yeah. And I was like, all right, that, that's fair. <laughs> Do you feel like you can read people better now that you have your degree in psychology? Did it make you understand the world around you a little bit better? Or is it just... I mean, it's it's for me, it's more of actually like a personal thing. Like it helps me with myself and mm. deal with everyday life. And sure, I mean, I you know, my friends and family would maybe, you know say that they see a difference because I kind of am everyone's therapist. So maybe, maybe the in that. The mental health world that we live in, you kind of understand it a little bit better and your own neuroses. For sure. And, and I, I I, try my best to kind of take what I've learned and utilize it when, you know, helping friends and family with, you know, their issues or whatever it is. And it's definitely helped. I did a movie about OCD um, and um, obviously my education came in, came in clutch there. Or sometimes your friend's like, dude, Stop with the college shit. Just talk to me. Just as talk a to human. me. No, because I don't Stop do it to like that. Me. Like I don't. I I don't do it like that. Like yeah. I I kind of I don't try to be the therapist. You know what I mean? I think when I look back, I'm like, yeah, I'm definitely kind of in the. I definitely do that a bit. Yeah. But when they want me to, when they ask me to, essentially, like I'm not. I know when to kind of just let them vent sit back. Whatever. If you ask my opinion, yeah, I'll give it. I think in general, it probably helps so much with uh, just any audition honestly because i think the best thing you can do as an actor is understand where that character is coming from and the human psyche why sure. why the character is saying the words that they're saying that's what I, any audition i get i try to like i really try to understand like why is the person saying that not like where is this coming from what's the deeper thing what it's does just it like mean to yeah, me? like I, yeah i don't really like that kind of stuff doesn't really matter to me it's more of like okay what is the intention yes like, what why why is the person saying the words they're saying so important and i feel like having that degree helps a lot that was why I did it. I was like, look, I, I'm not going to, I wanted something that would still kind of help with the industry I wanted to continue to be in, but also give me a little bit of a different education. And it definitely did that. It, it helps every day personally. It helps with work, you know, acting, yeah. characters, all of that. So yeah, I'm happy with my decision. Yeah, USC for me was also like. I just have Mika do all that work for me. Yeah. If I could like, if I could get into me. USC's film school, to me, it was like. I, I gotta go there. Yeah, you know, like it just was like a accomplishment, I guess, in my for myself of like going there. But we honestly kind of like studied all those things because we did a lot of screenwriting classes. Like that okay. was a big part of it. Yeah, of which was really cool for me because screenwriting is not like a thing that I want to pursue in my career. I I enjoy doing it. And I enjoy writing, but I I think if you're an actor and you write it, you'll understand why writers get so annoyed when you don't say their words. Yeah, and they're like, hey. I wrote it for a reason, yeah. so can you please say it? And it kind of helps with that. It was the same thing like with directing too. It's like anytime you direct, you're like, you realize how annoying actors can really oh, be I'm sometimes. Sure. You know, but, I think Louis C.K. talked about that on uh, Andrew Schultz's podcast. He was saying that uh, he did like a bit that like really hit, and Martin Scorsese was like, "All right, good one," but you know, or yeah. no, maybe it was Woody Allen as uh, someone. He was like, "I I want my thing. Like I wrote yeah. this. I yeah. just deliver it the way I want it." Yeah. And you know, that was a good one. You made everyone laugh, but. I need the product that I'm here to get. So the career you want to have, is it just acting? Do you want to do anything else on the, in the film side of things or is it just acting? I, I think just acting, definitely producing that sort of aspect. Um, Writing, not for me. I'm like, even people who love writing, hate writing. So why am I don't like writing? Why would I (laughs) do that? And um, directing, I don't, I don't think so. I don't think I'd end up in that role, but producing for sure yeah i would i mean the dream would be to have a, 
like a production yeah, company. That's, I feel like that's just everybody's dream at yeah. this point, dude. Just to be pumping out your own movies. For sure. But I feel like I, I've always kind of felt like if, if you don't have like a full passion, it's kind of how I feel about directing too. Is it's like if you don't have like a full passion for it, then don't do it. No. Because there's a lot of people who really want to do it and who are really good at it. And if it's like not something that you're like, this is what I want to do, then I what's then the get out of the way. What kind of producing get lost in the shuffle? Do? What like what kind of producing? Creative or like the actual on set producing or? Um, I'm gonna I add think, to that question too. I was gonna say, what kind of stories do you want to tell? Oh like, my gosh, um, I that's the thing. As an actor, you'd want to tell stories that you would want to play. Yeah. You know, yeah. and this whatever it is that you know, whether it's stuff you audition for that you don't get to do, or whether it's stuff you know that isn't out there, that kind of thing. But definitely the creative side of just you know, I love the idea of one day being able to you know take books and adapt them and mm. that kind of stuff. That would be definitely would be the way I would at least start out. That's like the easiest way to get a movie made too. Yeah, proven there's an audience. It's harder now though. I did actually look into it a little bit, and any kind of decent book gets their rights sold like even before publishing sometimes i think as people figured it out yeah we were taught at school honestly they said like if you really want to get a film made yeah. like go do that buy yeah. it for cheap and then just sell it because you already have proof that people want to yeah. watch it and they have the words already there so it's it's all yeah. done and that was like the simplest way to get a project made and i think everybody started doing that and then it's just kind of like the pe people are now like all right well if i'm writing a book i'm gonna this is going to cost a lot to me. Of course. You know? Oh, man, I have a book that I think I need to do that with. Because I know no one's heard of this book. Oh, you got to do it quick. I think you've I told me it. about this book. Huh? I think you've told me about this book. I'm not yeah. going to say it on the podcast because I don't want people to go steal it from you, dude. That would really suck. Get on it. Could you imagine this. you get out of here and they're like, you know, we... We're already, we're already <laughs> no, we that. Actually, we just optioned that this morning. That's Some kids like, dude, that. I just called up Paramount. <laughs> it's happening yeah. right now. The um, podcast isn't even released yet. It's just... Hey, stop. So you did a show. <laughs> <laughs> you did a show on Nick. People just You're one of the rare people who actually did both, the Disney yeah. and Nick. Switch sides. Yeah, that doesn't happen often. That's like going to UCLA for undergrad and USC for oh, like grad school. You that know? kills me. Wouldn't that be weird? Makes me feel like a traitor. Well, you kind of already were. It but was so, Nick at night, though. That's I will true. say, I didn't straight up switch from you know yeah. daytime kids Disney to, to daytime kid. Nick. Yeah, yeah. Um, it was supposed to be kind of. Very different than Nickelodeon. Ended up kind of morphing into the same thing, but that was, you know. It came on right before uh, George Lopez yes. would come yes. on, and I would wake up in the middle of the night to George Lopez on for 10 hours straight. Oh, I thought you were going to say you would wake up to watch my show, but that's okay. No, I would watch I it, would watch it. while I was already awake. Um, but I did watch your show, actually. I really did. Because um, Kim forced you. <laughs> yes. <laughs> no, there's something that you we said on that show. The show oh, there's a line from your show that I'm trying to remember that we always said, in our Maybe? family. Who was the dad in that show? Steve, uh, Scott Bayo. Scott Bayo. Scott Bayo, that's right. Yeah, yeah. That's pretty cool that you got to work with him. Yeah. Yeah, I played his daughter. Yeah, because yeah. our our audience has no idea who Scott Bayo no. is. Wow, you played his daughter and you got to work with him? That's pretty no, cool. No, no, no. That's like the time that that kid recognized you and was like, I love you on Mighty Med. Have you ever met Bradley Stephen Perry? No, dude. We do the <laughs> thing that we're doing on Monday. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. No, we film in separate stages. Separate yeah. locations. <laughs> um, just... But our, everybody who watches this show's parents know who scott bayo is you know yes. so that's pretty cool that you got to work with yeah them. what was that show like compared to zeke and luther that show was another great experience very different it was um you know live audience multi-cam so it was honestly like that was kind of like my retirement like yeah. single mm -hmm. cam yeah. is is intense and i was young and i was still very like on top of everything when i was doing zeke and luther and doing single cam so we would be filming two episodes at the same time and have two table reads that week so i would memorize fully four scripts yeah at a time so that's how like that's what i started with and then yeah. i got to like multi-cam and we're you know rehearsing for three days and then we get to do these like live shoots that were like Best half job days in the world, dude. i was yeah. like oh i'm kicking back yeah. this is relaxing um so it was a great experience and honestly so fun and funny and obviously we had rami Yusuf and alana ubach and so many like um amazing comedians were Wait, rami series regular. in your show yes yeah, dude, he, what the he took mother off. fuck yeah. is he in poor things Yes. Yeah. Yes. Man, because I, uh, Mika saw it and I then I saw a poster the other day and I was like, oh, why didn't you tell me that Remy was in that show? Yeah. That was him. Wow, mm -hmm. that is nuts. Crazy. He hadn't really his worked. Show's be great. Before your guys. No, show. it was like his first kind of thing, you know. But he writes and does all that stuff too, and was just always doing that. Like he he was ready for any opportunity, and he he got it and he took it and. 
Yeah, his show was huge. People huge. Loved that. And he, dude, he's he's hungry and he's a great writer. Like conceptually, mm-hmm. his show's fantastic. It's How just a very easy one. Huh? How do you know he's hungry? Well, I saw him eating one time. <laughs> You're like, this guy's so hungry. I was like, this, this guy's, guy's always hungry. hungry. Yeah. You can just tell with him. Hungry for opportunity. It's a st- stupid bit. Yeah, <laughs> horrible. <laughs> no, but honestly, we talk about it all the time on the show. Just because, like, that was Jake and I's bread and butter was, you know, four camera sitcom. It's like, it's so is the, fun. it is the best job in the world. So it easy. really is. It's so easy. It's it's the closest thing I think in the film industry to like a normal nine to five. Yeah. Because you go to the same place. For sure. You show up at the same time every day, except for Thursday and Friday. Worst case on Thursday, you get to sleep in a little longer. Yeah. Like they're like, we're not actually going to start until 11 today. It's like, dude, it's the best job in the world. It's I really would go great. back and do that in a heartbeat. But what kind of, to piggyback of what he said, what kind of like stories do you want to act in though? You know, what what's like your dream role? You know, I love comedy and I still would love to continue to do it to some extent, but it's because I spent like a decade doing it. It definitely is the thing that comes easiest to me yeah. now. And um, I definitely prefer to do more drama or at the very least like dark comedy, you know. Um, but yeah, you know, I just want to tell cool stories and and the dream is to kind of be in roles that people wouldn't look at me and be like, you're perfect for that role. Mm. That's kind of what I want to do. You know, I, I did a film five years ago now that's still in the process of finishing up and all that. I love those. Yeah. Uh, well, it's, it's kind of a tragic situation. Um, uh, Helena Hutchins was our cinematographer, the woman who was shot mm. by Alec Baldwin in that whole oh, holy. situation. So there was a lot of things that slowed up this process and it's an indie and um, a fantastic story, beautiful story, period piece. I play the lead. You get, I just get to do so many awesome things in this film and it was a great experience and it's a beautiful film and script and all that. But I read um, that script. It's a good script. Really? Yeah. You know what I'm talking about? Yeah. Really? I went out for that like years ago. For notes? Well, Wait. it wasn't called notes, but Rust. what do you, no, 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 no. I, I wasn't in Rust. She, so she was the cinematographer for Rust. Oh, I wasn't oh, part of Rust. Oh, oh. She, I see, I see. W- we were still finishing up. They were finishing up, you know, back end of the the movie, and she was heavily involved in the editing process and stuff. And then obviously she passed away, so it held everything up. Um, but oh, she, no, I, it's her only unreleased work besides Rust, which will obviously be released. Um, so yeah, it's crazy, but it was an incredible um, script, incredible experience. And, you know, they made me wear brown contacts and like mm. just I kind of look like a different person. And yeah. um, that to me is the stuff I want to do. I don't want to do the stuff that people look at me and go, oh, yeah, she's great for that. Yeah. Come on yeah. in. Like I, I want to, you know. Play something a little bit more gritty and. Uh, yeah, and yeah. fight for it. Yeah. Yeah. What do you want to do? I don't know if I've ever asked you that. Wow. Uh, I want to get out of here, man. <laughs> yeah. I want to get out of the city. <laughs> I'm hungry. Yeah, you, you and Remy. Um, yeah. Uh, I I mean, I I always love comedy. I think I'd love to tackle something that's more difficult. Um, I it's it is so comfortable to play yourself, and I do like doing that. I like bringing elements of myself into as many aspects of the character, just because it's easier. Um, I mean, in particular, though, I I don't know if I have anything that. Right now, I just want to do something and get my feet wet again. You know, I feel like I haven't been on a set for longer than a week in so long that I just want to play something that will help me fall in love again. You know, yeah. it kind yeah. of feels far away when you don't sit on set of for course. three, four months of the year. It is a weird feeling, dude, because it's like you almost like forget what it's like to do it. Yeah. You know, like because you're just so when you're on a set and you it's like your show or like if it's your movie and you're in a ton of scenes, it's like, it's such a different experience than just going and doing like a guest spot. Cause you don't really feel like, even when you go do a guest spot, you're like, I don't really feel like I belong here. Yeah. You know, it's like, this isn't my the show. I'm just yeah. here for this, you know? And I'm like, just here for the week and I'll just get out of here and do my job. But like a, a series regular, when you get to like kind of create a character and, and really like grow with the character, that's like the coolest feeling in the world, you know? And you know, all the crew members and it feels like a job Family. and work. Yep. It, that's uh, that is the best. Should go back to classes. Classes are helpful. I mean, it, I just didn't do it during COVID, and then I just didn't really keep up with it. But it, it is a good way to work the muscle. Certainly. But um, what do you want to do, dude? I think if I could have Jason Bateman's career, I'd be so happy. Uh, oh yeah, just like direct, act, have a show, have yeah, golf, have a family. I, I guess not even like a, a lot. He just wants to be Jason Bateman. I, I think, think if I could be I Jason Bateman, you. I would. I would be a happy person. Too. No, I think more of just like the. Uh, like the kind of things he's done as far as he's so funny 
And he's just such such a good actor when it comes to like that character that he plays. Generally the same guy, you know. Yeah, it's I think like, he plays himself. Just it's a the version same, of himself. It, but it's it works. And I would love to do that as far as comedy goes. But then it's like he does Ozark and it's like, oh wait, you're actually really incredible. Mm -hmm. You know, and you can do a lot more. And I think that like that was such a perfect role for him and such a perfect opportunity for him. And also he got to direct what most all of it, I think. Like he directed every episode. a good chunk of the episodes, yeah. yeah. And it's like that would be ideal for me. Cause I just I love comedy so much. And that's kind of the only thing I really want to do, but I would like to sprinkle in like random, like more serious stuff. But I just th like making people laugh is my favorite thing, but also being on those sets when it's just fun. Yeah. Like that's to me, that was my whole career so far. And that's what I, I just enjoy, you know? And anytime I do drama, it almost feels disingenuous. You know, it feels like I'm not myself, which is acting in a sense, but like yeah. at the same time, it's like, well, I do it because it's fun to me. And yeah. it's, it's something I enjoy doing, not because it's like a job, I guess. Yeah. So I don't well, know. You, you can't do it. You can't act if it's a job for you. Yeah, it's, it's, it's a difference between like doing SNL and doing, you know, Monster with Charlize Theron. It's, it's, that's yeah. a tough movie to watch. That's a tough character to play. I'd rather be on SNL every week of the year. Yeah. You know, just because it's fun. Monster. I like that. Huh? Yeah. You'll take Monster. I'll take yeah. Monster. And that, that's we'll, really we'll what it is. We'll be on SNL for you. Yeah, exactly. And then I'll be on SNL to promote it. Yeah, yeah. That You'll be the host. That's <laughs> yeah. the ideal situation, right? Where it's like you go get to do comedy. But like, I think like Adam Driver's kind of making a switch to comedy mm. too. But like, he's such he's so an incredible. Funny too. He's such a great actor. He's hilarious. But he's also hilarious because he's so dramatic that his comedy is like so dry. And dramatic, yeah. that it kind of like works with who he is. You know? What's that movie? He was a cop in a movie with Bill Murray, I think. I still haven't seen that movie no yet. Idea. Dennis, you know what that movie is? No? Okay. All right, thanks, Dennis. It's a big idea. Um, um, you can leave. I wanted to ask one more question before uh, we finish up on this one. This question? This question? Wow, that was a quick 45 minutes. Um, do you, did you get into it? Well, like when you did Zoom, you were like six or seven. Mm -hmm. Were you like, Mom, Dad, I'm doing this? Or is it like... It was before that. that before I, that? Yeah, I was three and a half and I started begging to act. Or actually, I think it was three and it took like a year, or six months or something of just harassing them, like pointing the TV saying, I do that, pointing it, you know, like magazines, be like, I do that. They're so like, was, what are you was talking it about? like performing or was it acting specifically? Acting. Like I mean, I... So we started with print and modeling, which I loved, but I wanted to do the other stuff. And so finally, it was, my parents allowed me to start auditioning for commercials and... Booked my first commercial, loved that. And then, you know, soon after it was movies and it loved that. It was just definitely performing and being, you know, on camera and that kind of thing. Not, not, not like the print modeling for me was. Like yeah, whatever. That. Yeah. Yeah. It was just like, I mean, it's fun to like be on a set or whatever, mm -hmm. but it, that wasn't like, I didn't find the enjoyment and in that. Be that in I front do. of the and camera, talk, do the talking. Yeah. That's what I wanted. Very I wanted to talk and yeah. have people listen to me. Yeah. I mean, very strange. I mean, sit in front I, of the TV, <laughs> smoking a cigarette, like, mom, I'm going to hey. be a star someday. That's fucking me right there. Right? <laughs> you, see, you see that girl? Right? I'm going to yeah. be her. It's Nothing's very, changed. But that's kind of actually, that's how I started doing it too. Because I, I was like smoking four, a cigarette? Yeah, I was smoking a, a, like a pack a day. Pack and a my day. mom was like, how can I get you off of this? You're three like, years old. Let me ask. I was like, put me on a TV show. On. I'll lay off the sauce. <laughs> um, no, but it was it was like kind of the same thing. I did a, a car commercial to start. I feel like most people our age who act at a young age start it with like doing a thousand commercials. Oh, yeah. 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 That's that, what you did. That was the way. By in. the way, best job. Like yeah. the most fun, easiest money. Yeah. You're but there for two days in, and you're out. If you're a cute kid and you want to be there, I think that separates you. That's my whole philosophy. Absolutely. Is that you got to want to be there and you will get the job. Because so many kid. kids don't. I mean, I, I was doing a commercial and they had an English version and a Spanish version and they had another little girl dressed just like me, whatever, ready to go out. She goes out. She's like, I don't want to do this. Starts crying. They ask me if I can speak Spanish. I say, if you teach me, it's yeah. four. And I did the Spanish version of the commercial too. Like I just, I wanted to be there. That's awesome. That's a great story. That's pretty what? cool. Yeah. Was it like a full speech or was it just a little like? No, it, was, it wasn't It was a ton. And I was literally three or four. I don't think I could do that now if you asked me to do it. I don't think I could give you... I mean, sure, I can mimic no. Spanish, but like I think I took three years of Spanish in high school, and I took three years or three semesters of Spanish in college. I don't think I could put together a full sentence. Como se llama? I guess. Sure, there you go. I I could not. I can't I don't even hear know what it. That means. I can't speak it. My brain Are doesn't do it. And I think <laughs> I think speaking mean? different languages. Doing? Oh, good. Okay, I'll go talk over here. But I think speaking different <laughs> languages is actually like the the most impressive thing to me, because you're literally training your brain to think and speak in a different way. And that is so much more impressive than anything else I can do. 
and I cannot, I can't find the brain function to learn it. It's it just hard. doesn't work in my brain. I don't know it's why. It's just so cool to hear like the beginning. Like that's such a great beginning story that you outclassed another person. Not to you know shit on that <laughs> little Spanish three year old. Yeah, a little shit. But just crying. Most kids, like, Let me take care of this. Most kids don't want to do it. It's their parents forcing them to do it. Yeah. And I'd be in, you know, audition rooms and kids would be crying and their parents would be like, I'll go get you a toy if you just go in there and do the lines. Yeah, and it was exactly. like, for me, the, the present was getting to be there. I yeah. would get grounded from auditions because wow. that was, it was like an honor to be there yeah. for me. <laughs> I figured out that I could do both. So I was like, hey, look, I would negotiate. I'd say, hey, look, if I get a call back on this, we're going to go to Burger King. Okay. You'd and say if this I don't, to your then, grandma? I'd say this to my grandma. I'd say, we're going to go get ice cream, go to Burger King, whatever. I would, I would use a ploy. I would say, like, look, I know I'm going to go into this room and things are going to go well for me. And if it goes well, we're going to go get something. <laughs> like, and she goes, sure, yeah. Do you like Matthew McConaughey and the Wolf of Wall Street? <laughs> like, fucking sell me this yeah. pen. Yeah. <laughs> 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 that is, wow, yeah, that's brilliant. Yeah, well, I mean, at that age, if you want it and you're confident, it really, it really shows. And it definitely. And now we're not that you. age and we're screwed. Yeah, because other fucked. people want it. Yeah, because yeah. everybody else doing it wants it. That's the problem. When you were younger, if you wanted it, you stood out. Now yeah. everybody's like, "I moved here. I'm doing this shit." Yeah. And I'm like, "Fuck, all right." Too many hungry Rammies. Yeah, yeah. It's Rami. Rami, Rami, Rami. <laughs> yeah, it, it's Rummy. Ram three hundred. Yeah. Um, hey, thank you so much for doing Thanks this. Thanks for coming. Of that was course, the quickest thanks, little forty five minutes ever. I'm so um, glad. Yeah, thank you. Thank you for uh, starting off my my blonde fetish, I guess. You know, oh, I really God. apologize to all females in the world <laughs> dude, for that no, one. I apologize for thinking it's a fetish, dude. I can't it's wait so for Kim creepy. to listen to this episode. Thanks yeah. so much for coming on so his mom can finally listen to an episode of this podcast. Yay, Kim, I love you. Isn't that messed up, dude, that that's what it took? Not her son having a podcast <laughs> nope. to do it? Well, we have a podcast. Do we not? Kind of. All right. Hey, thanks so much for coming. <laughs> thanks for coming. All right. <laughs> She has become uh, quite the actress. I didn't know that she was uh, working on such cool stuff. Yeah, she's had a great career. I haven't kept up with her in a while, but yeah, yeah, really great career. That's uh, kind of how you have to do it, right? Just keep doing indies, keep doing films, whatever comes mm -hmm. your way. I feel like you just got to do it. Yeah, and she wants to push herself, which is the hardest thing and most important thing to do as an actor. Like if you want to be taken seriously, I don't. I, that's why I'm doing this. I don't care about being taken seriously. Yeah, well, the good news is nobody watches the podcast, so yeah, I, there's not much you have to yeah, do. Yeah, exactly. I mean, I am super famous, but dude, you're that joke. pretty fucking famous. Pretty fucking famous, dude. Yeah. Let me just simmer in that. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> dude, I, I, uh, I, I watched the clip of uh, the thought of you getting hit by a car while I was sitting here, and now sitting here doing this with you, it's, it's all I can think about. It's just a uh, just a car just <laughs> throwing you across the room. I don't know. Why it's so funny to me. I don't think it's funny to me. Okay. <laughs> do you want to do a question, sir? I do want to do a question. Right. I was just thinking about how. Oh, here's a picture of uh, Mike from the, when he was on our episode. Great. Cool. Yeah. Um, I have a question. It's my camera. Roll. I took a screenshot of it. Uh, I was thinking about how we used to record in our old studio, and I used I used to have to set up all this equipment, um, right before we recorded. Mm -hmm. And our guest would be there, sitting me, sitting there watching, sitting me, me. sitting me. And to ask the question. Yeah, um, I just did so much, you know. Okay, question four. This is from Mick Jojo three zero eight. Okay, question for Bradley Perry because there was a couple capitals in there by accident. Um, which movie did you like being on more? Good luck, Charlie Christmas or Hubie Halloween? But they said hubby, I think. Is it spelled H U B I E? B B. B B. Hubby Halloween. Hubby, hubby, hubby. Um, I'll be honest with you, Hubie. 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 And I was only in Hubie for a week, but uh, it was just uh, it was an amazing experience. You were also an adult, and you weren't, like, you were working yeah. every single week with the same people for the Good Luck, with the Char it Good was Luck Charlie new. cast. Yeah. It was very new. Um, Good Luck Charlie movie was fun. I didn't have much to do in the movie. Um, like, I, we just kind of messed around Utah for a while, like me, Eric, and Jason. Mm -hmm. We did get to play paintball in the movie, which was a lot of fun, so they had to make us go play paintball a bunch to, like, train for it. To train for it? Yeah, yeah. So they paid for you to paintball? We paintballed so much while the girls were filming. Oh, man. I know. Amazing. We all got pretty good at it, too, because we were just playing all the time, and it was always uh, <laughs> it was always Jason and I versus Eric, and we were just <laughs> lighting Eric up, dude. You guys had to be, like, bruised up after that, right? Oh, yeah, yeah. I mean, paintball wrecks you, man. Yeah. Yeah, but it, we would just, I would know when Eric was down because it was like, 
Oh! <laughs> You'd hit him and he would be he's the most like, expressive person. Dude, he's like a giant, you know? Like, he's a massive human being. It's not like he's hiding behind things. Was it one of those, like, floats uh, that you hide behind? Or was it, like, yeah, house? Yeah, it was an indoor one. Oh, so it was all really? the, um, like, those blow-up, yep. like, whatever they are. Um, cause the only paintball you and I played was always outside. Yeah. And like, with that cars, like, like abandoned cars. Rahata it was like, yeah, like it was in Moorpark. Park. I don't know if that place was still there. To be honest with you, I, at this age, at this point in my life, paintball, that sounds painful, 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 painful. Like paintball. <laughs> <Damn you dead. laughs> I don't think I'd enjoy paintball as nearly as much as I did. Cause you brush it off, you get a bruise. Yeah. And it was exciting. Luke throws it was like fun. paintball yeah, at Austin's it? car and <laughs> yeah. it stains it forever. It just it was like, dude, ah, that sounds that sounds horrible. I don't think that's how it's like airsoft. I used to think airsoft was so cool, and I'm like, why would I want little stingy pellets hitting my dude, skin? I uh, was playing. Oh, I guess it's when a sport. I was like Ten. Me and my friends were all playing outside, and my buddy had an airsoft gun, and he shot me in the leg, like point blank, and the pellet it went in so hard that it stayed in my skin, and I had to like pop it out like it's it. It hurt. So bad. Wait, did it go underneath or was it just like you hanging could, out? In the it edge? was just like in, you know, like you could see it like a hole in my leg and the, just the top of the BB was just out. How close was it a BB or was it an airsoft gun? I think it was a BB gun. Oh yeah. You're not supposed to shoot that. That'll kill like birds and squirrels. Oh, I, know. I know. The squirrel that was on my leg also died. Yeah, he got, yeah, he got hit. Did you have another question? I did have another because question. Because you're going to your that phone. Be, you yeah, that one was going to be short. Uh, no, it's because I just don't want to talk to you anymore. I'm checking out. Oy. Um... This one said, I'm so confused. <laughs> this is the wrong question. They're confused why they, we couldn't mention the shows or the movies because of the strike. Hey, remember when this we is, answered that the last episode? Uh, exactly. I know. That's why I'm doing this one. This one says, let's, this is their username is let's go beyond together. Take you on a journey. Whatever that is. Um, are you able to say why Elite Force was canceled or does anyone know? I, I want to do that one because. Yeah, go ahead. I mean, we don't really know. No. Um. We know that they were told that we weren't going to be canceled, so they wrote a cliffhanger. Yeah. And, I mean, it's just the funniest thing to meet people in person and have them say, like, why did you guys yeah. leave on such a cliffhanger? Well, we Dog, were told to write to one of No? <laughs> but also, too, it's I don't even know if anybody... I don't think there was a conversation that second season was going to happen. I think it was just generally an assumption. You know, yeah. it's like you just kind of assume that those things happen. It was such a long process with all the contracts and starting up the show in the first place that it was like... To do 16 episodes, you were just like, oh, okay. And there wasn't like a conversation of we're not doing this anymore. No. It was literally like, all right, guys, we'll see you maybe in a few months. I didn't and then nobody talked heard to anyone anything. from set about it. And I didn't talk to any of the yeah. executives that were on set during shooting days or, you know, on the 21st floor. It was weird, and too, because like uh, on TV shows, they always call it what's it called? It's the back nine. You always get your back nine, right? Like mm -hmm. it's if the show's doing well, you get your back nine, which is nine more episodes. Sometimes they add more, but it's like the typical back nine. And we were at that 16 episode mark where usually you find out that you're doing your back nine. We were under the impression we were probably going to do a back nine. And then we just didn't. And it didn't happen. I forgot about that. Remember? It was like, yeah. it, just, it was like, oh, okay. And we were all kind of like, I think there was a conversation when we were leaving of like, maybe we're going to just take a couple weeks and then we'll come back and do the back nine. Mm -hmm. But we never heard about that and then just never heard again. It was quite literally like you left and you never heard a thing. Like it, so it, I mean, we weren't, it's not like we were canceled. We weren't picked up. Like no one said anything. No one yeah. gave us a call and was like, hey, you guys aren't coming back. It's yeah. just we didn't come back and the contract expired. Yeah. Yeah. It was weird because the contracts were for two years, though. Two years. And I think it was like if they don't renew it, if they don't, you know confirm another season's happening within X amount of time, then you're released from the contract and they'd have to renegotiate. And we had a lot of fun making that show, too. Yeah, it was a lot of fun. It was an enjoyable show to do. Um, for camera, a little more demanding because of the stunts, but yeah, it was still yeah, it'd been fun nice, and easy. Nice to get paid for another season, too, you know. You know, just throwing it out there. Maybe I'd be sitting in a home right now, not an apartment. Yeah, I think I did a movie after that called... Hashtag Roxy, and that didn't do, yeah, the nose movie. Yeah. And that didn't do anything either. But, bro, you did that movie. That didn't come out for, like, 17 years. Every single movie I did did that. I just don't understand. Every single movie I have done has taken two or three years to come back around. Why? I don't know. That's weird. 
I don't know. This has been a very actory episode. Yeah, I we've know. talked a lot about auditions and acting and, and movies. And the crazy Process, thing is nobody's still watching. I know. I feel like we're just talking to ourselves. And Dennis. And Dennis. And he's not even listening. Yeah. Dennis, can you cut to our guest real quick? You know how you always have to go pee? <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm gonna end the episode because I have to go pee. All right. All right. Well, we'll see you guys next week. I love you, buddy. Thanks so much for tuning in and listening to us babble on and talk about our dreams and ambitions and acting. <laughs> really just put my heart out there and you kind of stomped on it. Yeah, they did, right? On, on camera, I said I love you and you just oh, I love you too. started talking again. I love you too. Okay, go pee. Okay. <laughs>